How can being a father of six help you to become a better business person? Well, by learning to customise your approach, listening, you can achieve better outcomes in both parenting and business. And with this mindset, it's not just business uh, you can limit to, uh, to business or family, you can use it in life in general. Uh, just a bit about myself, uh, my name is Rodney Dunn, I'm a National Sales Manager for an agricultural company here in Griffith and it's a position I've held for probably just over 10 years now, um, before that I worked in various sales roles across Australia uh, for approximately 7 years. So during these past 17 years I've learned a thing or two about being a good salesperson, I've had some fantastic mentors, uh, but a lot of these skills I've learned from being a dad. Now, my approach to sales is very similar to how I approach my family life. Uh, I customise my approach to each sale as much as I customise the product that we're uh, building for the customer's needs. So a bit about my family life. Almost 20 years ago, um, my wife came to me and said, oh, you're going to be a dad. Uh, so nine months later, my wife and I had a little girl and my world changed. Uh, it's very cliche, I know, everybody's probably been in the same position, any parent would know it is uh, very, very rewarding. From there, that's when things went a little bit different though for us, because very quickly we had a, another child, we had another girl, and then another one. Now, I love my girls and I desperately wanted a boy, and my wife would have had a thousand babies if she was able to, so we fell pregnant again and we did have a little boy. So never to do things in a half measure. That was four kids under four years old. And what I quickly realised is that the eldest daughter was very different to the second daughter and the third. Girl C, the, the third girl, was more of a tomboy. She was a bit of a rat bag and she was always outside playing in trees, running around. And the second born was a little bit more, uh, how would you put it, uh, a little bit more work. She was, she'd had allergies, she had <laughs> projectile spews, all of those lovely things as a parent. And uh, the firstborn, well, she was just a, she was quite happy and healthy. And the little boy, he was just very chilled out little dude, he had to go with the flow. It didn't take me uh, long to realise what worked with the eldest daughter didn't work for the second and so on. I could throw the third born daughter up in the air and she'd just giggle her head off and have a, have a great time. Whereas if I did it to the other two, they would have hated it and they would have freaked out and cried. So subconsciously, I started to customise my approach by listening to them and thinking about what they needed. I just didn't know I was doing that yet. So during my wife's upbringing, her family had also been very involved in foster care. And this is something that rubbed off on my wife and I. So with a young family of four and my me starting a career in ag agricultural sales, uh, we started foster care as well. So like I said, nothing in half measure. So our family of six went to a family of eight, to a family of seven, back to a family of eight, over a period of about seven years while we did foster care. Every uh, child coming into our care was different and we had some that were little adults. They were the parent of the family and they had to be because they were the ones making the food for their mum because mum was an alcoholic and she couldn't look after herself. We had some that were very quiet and shy. We had some with behavioural issues and some that just needed a place to stay for a little bit while you know, things got sorted out at home. We found this a very challenging period uh, in our lives but a very rewarding one. And growing as a father, I continued to learn that what one worked for one child didn't work for another. So my wife has an amazing way of tuning into each child, including our own, about what they really needed. And then she was able to guide me to become a better dad. She showed me that each child was individual. And even though they had to follow the same rules at home, they had to be looked at as an individual. So customising that approach. Now, anybody that's been involved in foster care, they, they know that it is, it's very hard to not to get attached to the children. And this takes a toll after a while when you have children in your care and they come and then they uh, be either reunited with family or whatever the situation happens, uh, it becomes too hard to, to sort of do it and it wears you down after a while. So after seven years, uh, we decided that we were gonna have a bit of a break. At that point in our lives, my wife, come to me with a fantastic idea. She says to me, 
You know how I don't like even numbers? I'm a bit, I'm an individual, I like odd numbers. Why don't we have a fifth baby? Everybody can see where this is going. <laughs> I resisted as long as I could. Finally, I cracked and said, okay, you've got three months. And if we don't fall pregnant in three months, I'm getting a snip, we're done. So within a month and a half, my wife comes to me and says, guess what? I'm pregnant. So this is where things get a little bit crazy, if they hadn't been already in our lives. We go to the first ultrasound, and it just happens to be my birthday, and the sonographer starts waving the wand around, and she tells us we're having twins. <laughs> so happy birthday, Rod. At that moment, it went from, let's have a fifth baby to holy cow, we're having six, and we wouldn't change it for the world. A happy family of eight. Now, it was around this time I realised that to be a successful salesman in a successful business, I must really listen to what my customers really need and then customise a solution just like we did with our kids. Sounds simple though, but as you guess by now, I can talk. I can talk until you know the cows come home. But when I'm meeting a customer for the first time, I like to listen. And it's something that I've been doing ever since that point. I like to listen to what the customer needs, who they are, what they do. Everybody's got a story to tell. Everybody has different needs and wants. And listening is one of the most important skills a salesperson can have, as well as a parent. Take a local irrigation farmer friend of mine, for example, they'd grown up here in Griffith, they were a third generation uh, rice grower in town, and they had to learn to adapt to different conditions and different uh, demands from the rice market. They adapted, adopted new technology such as direct drilling rice uh, with a disc seeder. Direct drilling is done to reduce water usage and to get better germination without the risk of bird damage, which was evident with aerial sown rice crops. So why did this farmer have to adapt to the new technology? Well, he had to listen to his customer. He had to listen to what the market needed and they customised the solution to get a better result for them, which was by direct drilling. That gave them a more reliable source of rice, grown with less water and better quality. So I sat down with that farmer, listened to what he needed and I helped customise a machine for him. And now this happened to be a custom uh, made cedar that was specifically designed to fit his rice bays which was narrow enough to be able to uh, go from farm to farm with, with easy transport. It had to have the best uh, optimal row spacing for the best germination, had to be reliable, had to be within budget, and it, and it also had to uh, meet his uh, tractor horsepower requirements. All those things there for that particular farmer were his needs, and I only learnt that by listening. So to do that, it's like one big circle of needs and solutions. He had a need, he had a solution, I had to help him achieve that and so on. Now that irrigation farmer from Griffith needs to uh, have a different, completely different need to a dry land farmer from Rankin Springs or Ardlethan or Marunda. Now those three, Rankin Springs, Ar Ar Ardlethan and Marunda, they're probably dry, dry area winter cereal croppers, yep. So they'd have all the same needs, right? No. So by listening to my customers, I learned that what they've done in the past, what they intend to do in the future, where they are now and what they want to do, and so much more by asking them and sitting down and talking to them, you can find the perfect machine to suit. You can have one farmer from Rankin Springs struggling with an acidity problem. He needs to address that by incorporating lime down to 300 mil so that he can adjust his pH from his soil and grow a better crop. He's going to have something completely different to an Ardlethan farmer who is a no-till strip and disc guy. Now, I don't expect anybody to understand any of that last bit that I've just been talking about. It's what I do, and, and even though they sound the, the same, they have different needs. That's my point. And you'll only learn that by listening. It also gives you the opportunity to customise your approach to find them a proper solution you will in turn end up providing a right solution for their individual needs, thus gaining their trust and repeat business. Both of these are vital for a business to be successful long term. This mantra, if you want to call it that, of customising a solution to provide a better outcome rings true though in so many parts of our lives. I've recently got the chance to sit down and talk to a husband and wife uh, who run a 3,000 acre farm near Wagga Wagga. Now this husband and wife 
they're far from your normal, typical mum and dad farming operation. They were until tragedy stuck a few years ago when the husband had a serious motorbike accident and he's unfortunately now quadriplegic. Now, their approach to how they run their farm was completely flipped on its head from that moment. It is an amazing story to hear, particularly when they talk about being resilient and adapting to change and looking at customising their approach to be able to continue to run their farm, raise their family and continue with a life that they love. For example, she can go out on the farm, say she's driving the tractor. If she's not really sure on something, they've set it up so she can FaceTime him He's got a customised app on his phone that he can answer with a little button thing that he can answer with his chin. He can then talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, see what's happening and walk her through it, all the while being able to see what's actually happening there. And this not only helps her out, but it also helps keep him involved in the farming operation tr too. Uh, that They are truly inspirational people. One of the most amazing stories that these people have actually shared with me was a goal that they, uh, they set when they were stuck in hospital in Sydney. So just a week before their accident, he'd pulled the gearbox out of an old truck of theirs. Now, they decided when they got back, she was going to be rebuild the gearbox and put it back in the truck and get it running again. Could you imagine <laughs> verbally guiding one of your, your partner on how to rebuild a gearbox piece by piece? bolt by bolt, <laughs> seal by seal, well, they did it. He was able to talk her through it and they got it to work. And they, didn't, they said it wasn't smooth sailing, but they adapted to the situation, they listened to each other, they customised their approach and they achieved a fantastic result. So as we go through life, I think we need to probably take a little bit more time to stop and think about how we can customise what we're doing to get a better outcome, whether it is changing the way we approach a certain person, or even if it's just listening to somebody we wouldn't normally listen to. For your information, it is amazing what you can get out of a conversation with an elderly person. They have often the most amazing wisdom to share. It's also amazing what you can get by talking to your five-year-old when they come home from school and asking them about their day. They can be brutally honest. <laughs> so this is something that I, I think I'm continually learning on how to do better. I'm learning on how to really listen, not just hear what they have to say, but really understand it. And I'm also learning on how to customise my approach for everybody I meet, so that hopefully we can all get a better outcome. Remember that just because we're customising our approach to go one way though, doesn't mean that it's always gonna go the same way for the rest of our lives. It is continually changing process. So at the end of the day, this is my little bit of advice and what I've picked up over the time. I hope that as you leave tonight, you'll have a chance to stop and think about how you can listen to each other better, whether it be in sales, as a parent, running a business, or just in your daily life and work to get a better outcome. Thank you.